Hello, everybody, and welcome to That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. I'm your host, Bill Yankovi. Joined for the second week in a row is Fro. Welcome again, Fro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, this week on the program, we are going to review Clash of Champions. We are also going to go through part two of... The list of PWI Top 500. This week we go from number 250 all the way to number one. Mm -hmm. Plus, I will be telling you my experience at the Bryce Remsburg seminar that took place last week. And I have not... Fro doesn't even know what happened. I have not told him. No. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the stories. That I tell you guys a little bit later on. Um, let's get into some news. There's really not a lot of news to discuss, but I think the first thing that should be brought up: uh, NXT started on the USA Network this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I was busy, so I did not get a chance to see it. The ratings came in, and they got over a million viewers from eight to nine mm-hmm. p.m. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, it was an okay episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, then I heard during the second hour when they switched to WWE Network, the network completely crashed. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've heard that too. So, so yeah. Um, oopsie. Yeah, oopsie. <laughs> but no, that's that's a good start for NXT to get mm-hmm. a million views, over a million on your first week. That's very, very good. So, big props to everyone in NXT. Let's see. Because here's my thing, Fro. I'm probably not going to watch it next week as well. Because to me, and, and, and this is no disrespect to NXT, because, you know, it's a very good product. Mm-hmm. To me, I will start caring when AEW begins. October the 2nd, which I'll be there that night in D.C., so that's going to be the night that I start to care, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And speaking of AEW, they finally decided on a name for their television program. So it will be NXT versus Dynamite. Yeah, I... I don't know if I like that dynamite. Well, you know. Uh, Not everything can be. It seems a little TNA, to be honest. Hey, not everything can be a winner, you know? Nope. No. True. I posted on Facebook this morning, I would be very happy if they played the song Dynamite by the Scorpions as their theme song (laughs) for the show. But I highly doubt that's going to happen, so... Uh, um, uh, st- still not as funny as uh, uh, NBC calling uh, their streaming service the Peacock. So yeah, I, I I'm glad you brought that up because oh gosh, yeah, I'm gonna wait to see what the price is. And this is sort of a cheap plug here. <clears throat> um, as you guys are listening to this. I did a special a few days ago. It's up right now. Myself and Jim Boy Star, where we discussed Disney Plus because they came out earlier this week with their tentative list of movies and shows that will be up on the first day. And the thing is, it's already in the Netherlands. Right. Uh, I've seen some YouTube videos uh, from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, with the interface of it, and it's looking freaking gorgeous. Oh, man. So, um, actually, what will happen, and this will be a one-time only thing, this will be sort of, let's call it a, 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 a gift to all you guys. Not only are you going to get this show that you guys are listening to right now, but I'm going to put up the Disney Plus discussion on that wrestling show for this weekend. 
And it might stay up yeah. for you guys to listen to. Be something a little different. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed that. So, I have the most important question of all. Yes. Did you see the sneak peek of <laughs> The Masked Singer? Oh, you know, there was a, a show going on at the same time. It was like a clash of champions of some kind. But I've seen, <laughs> but I've seen enough commercials. I know there's the dog. There's a flamingo. There's a cupcake. Are you ready for the list? I have it in yes. front of me. Yes. Oh, yes. So we have Black Widow. Mm -hmm. um, we have Butterfly. We have eagle, we have egg, we have flamingo, we have flower, we have fox, we have ice cream, we have leopard, uh, leopard, we have panda, we have penguin, we have rottweiler, we have skeleton, then uh, we have a thingamajig, then we have a tree, and then we have one that's to be announced. Mm. So, I think, 16. I think the ice cream and cupcakes sound like to be my favorites. And let me go a little through this. The competitors have 140 films, 69 Emmy, uh, Emmy Awards nominations, 42 Grammy nominations, 31 Billboard singles, 22 Broadway shows, 20 Platinum Records, 19 Emmy win wins, 15 marriages, 8 divorces, 7 Super Bowl wins, 6 multiple uh, uh, records, 5 Hall of Famer, 3 New York bestseller, and 2 have been named Times Magazine's most influent people. Okay, how many times have they been married? 15? 15 times and 8 divorces, oh, yeah. Oh, boy, so Elizabeth Taylor is on the show. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I am now going to tell you that I will be here every Friday as long as uh, the Masked Singer is on to give you the Masked Singer report. You know what? That's a good idea. If you do like an audio and send the clip to me, we could put it in every week. I will send you a clip every because it's on Wednesday. Yeah, this, uh, this coming Wednesday, the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. So it's four groups this uh, this year. I like that. Okay. Uh, because there's so many people. Um. They decided to bring it in in four groups, so I'm I'm happy to see that. Do you do you have my email address? Because I think that's how you should be able to send it. Oh, we can talk about it. Okay, afterwards. yeah, we'll talk about that off air. <laughs> no, I'm I'm excited. I'm I am super excited. I think what I'll do for this season because of what we're gonna get Wednesday night is I'll just watch it on Thursday. Like, once I yeah. get home from work, so I can watch and... Because I, I enjoyed the heck out of that show last year, so... I can't... I mean... Wait. I mean, the competitors over 140 films? That's a lot of movies. And you said there's 16 competitors. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. So let, uh, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up the calculator real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen now. Okay. So on average, each contestant in this has done eight and three quarter movies. Yeah, and and we also have seven Super Bowl wins. Oh, man. So I mean at least one of them. Is a football player. Yeah. Maybe two. <laughs> two. Maybe maybe two. Yeah. Yeah. Seven Super Bowl wins though. Jeez. That makes me think uh, maybe someone for, from uh what is it? The Ste not the Steelers. The Patriots. Uh, the Patriots is there. Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't know. 
we'll figure it out yep. as time goes on. We will figure it out. Yes. But yeah, this this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday. And that's two uh, hours this first week, right? Sorry? The first one is two hours long? Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, because uh, it's group A, a and B yeah. are going to be on the same group day. All right. And then... And then we will have group C and D on October 2nd and then October 9th. All right. So, All right, I can get into this. It's interesting it's that they, they take it like that, that because then it will be four, four and four and four. four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to talk about a segment on Raw this week. That I, I gotta be honest, I'm I'm not liking it, but I'm not hating it. Okay. It is the Maria Canellis baby angle. Ah, oh, I heard about this. Um, so this past Monday on Raw, they did the gender reveal, and right. th- this is a legit thing. It is going to be a baby boy. Nice. However. Because this is WWE, and actually, this is the only thing I didn't like about Raw, actually. Because Raw was, for the most part, an entertaining show this week. Okay. Um, Maria is like, well, Mike, you're, you might not be the dad. The dad might actually be Ricochet. And Ricochet's got this look like, what the fuck? You know, like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the dad. So, Mike gets upset. He and Ricochet have a match. Ricochet gets the win. Then Maria comes out and she's like, well, Ricochet's not the father, but here's the father of my baby and it's the returning Rusev. So it's like, okay, we got Rusev back. And maybe... But uh, what about Lana then? Well, I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. Mm. So, now... There is a rumor going around today, and this may be a possibility that we see this on Raw real soon. Maury Povich could be on Raw to do a paternity oh, no. test. <laughs> oh my Brian <laughs> Don I mean oh. <laughs> I mean I love I like Maury because he's a DC guy. His dad was a writer. Uh, sports writer for many years here. Right. But, yeah, that's what this real-life thing has become into a oh. into a story where, oh, okay, we're going to egg that, you know, Mike Canales might not be the father and his wife is a whore, so... <laughs> that uh, is so sad. sad. The way they're just burying Mike is the saddest thing. Because he's talented. Like, when he was in Ring of Honor, that dude was talented. Oh, man. I, I feel bad for him. But what can you do? Yep, yep. All right. Um, Fro, I'm going to play an audio clip here. You're not going to be able to hear it. Our audience nope. will. Mm-hmm. Because I only bring this up when female wrestlers or personalities have either gotten engaged or got married. So let me play the audio real quick. Of course you guys are hearing the song Frozen, so but he know but he knows the song that I'm playing. It's the funeral march. It's it's a funny way. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here to report that as of yesterday, Tori Wilson got married. I don't even know who the guy is, but she got married yesterday. (laughs) You never heard of him? I don't even know who this is. This is the first time I've actually heard of her bringing up her, you know, this relationship. Oh, but no, but no, it, it's cool, you know, that she got married. Good for her. Um, I'm I'm gonna see what this guy's name is. 
and they got married. It looked like it got they got married at the Grand Canyon. Um, over in the desert here. Oh, okay, I got a name. His name is Justin Tupper. Hmm. Justin Tupper. Uh, let's... Maybe we could do a little info on Mr. Tupper real quick. Maybe he's uh, the one that uh, has earned all the money for the Tupper where. Um, <laughs> let's see. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a yeah. yeah. Okay, so Justin Tupper apparently is involved in golf. Okay. So, like, he. I guess, like, he teaches people how to golf or. I'm Good for him. Friend. Yeah. Oh, he is the senior vice president of Revolution Golf at the Golf Channel. Of course, he is. All right, so he's got a steady job. All right, I I never had the biggest crush on Tori Wilson. I I do think she is pretty, but I never really had the biggest crush on her. So, nah, yeah, she's okay. she's okay. But congratulations to her. This is her second time getting married. Uh, for those who don't remember, the first time she was married to Billy Kidman. I do, I do remember that. that. Uh, one last piece of business, and then I'm going to get into a fun story here. Um, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there is a statue of the legendary professional wrestler, The Crusher. Well, it got vandalized this week in Milwaukee. Aww. Um, they arrested earlier this week an 18-year-old young man by the name of James C. Dudgeon. And I wish I had the photo to send you, Fro, because this kid, who is an idiot, by the way, has Milwaukee either written or tattooed on his face. <laughs> and he's 18 years old. Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me... Well, I'll... I'll you can look it up for yourself, bro. But mm -hmm. well, there is now a second person who has been arrested and identified in the vandalism of the Crusher statue. It is a 21-year-old by the name of Douglas Macklin of Pembine, Wisconsin. A this is according to the Journal Sentinel from Milwaukee. A warrant has been issued for Macklin's arrest, and if convicted, he could face a $10,000 fine and or up to nine months in prison. Okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else. Like, I don't think, you know, as far as you know, what punishment the 18-year-old could have if he gets found guilty. Um, but yeah, the statue was unveiled earlier this year as part of Crusher Fest in South Milwaukee after $40,000 was raised through crowdfunding and donations to erect the statue of the Crusher. Um... Mayor Eric Brooks issued a proclamation on unveiling day naming June 8th, 2019 as the Crusher Day in South Milwaukee. The memorial is located at the corner of 11th and Milwaukee in South Milwaukee. So, uh, hopefully these young punks will learn to not mess with the statue of the Crusher. You don't do that to legends. Yeah, yeah that, that is, is a very, very asshole, asshole thing to do. do. What would have been funny is if, like, the ghost of the Crusher came up from the dead and, like, scared the shit out of them. That would have been hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Okay, so, last weekend, I happened to experience something really, really cool. And that is go to a wrestling seminar. Uh, Bryce Remsburg was the host of this seminar. And this wasn't an in-the-ring seminar. This was a sort of a behind-the-scenes look, like a non-physical capacity of professional wrestling. And it was held at the University of Maryland, because the University of Maryland last weekend, they had like an arts festival, like performance art. Right. right. And there happened to be a wrestling show that night at the University of Maryland. First time the college has ever held a professional wrestling event there. So I go to the seminar, and it's really, really good. Um, there were about 16 or 17 of us there, all together, for this seminar. And it was just an intro, you know, it was like, okay, what does an announcer do? What does a commentator do? What does a manager do? What does a referee do? And it was really good because there was a lot of different things that you learned and you thought about, and it's like, you know, that makes perfect sense because if you don't have this without that, then none of it works. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really good. Um, excuse me. My favorite part, or one of my favorite parts, and I, and I have to mention this, there was a gentleman sitting behind me, and pretty much a lot of us were, are lifelong wrestling fans, but this one gentleman might have had the best story of growing up being a wrestling fan. He broke a bone in his body at a very young age while attempting to put the sharpshooter on Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Well, you know, Winnie, Winnie the Pooh is not going to... He's not going to job for anyone unless you got honey, you know. <laughs> but you really learn, or I really learned, from two plus hours being with Bryce about a lot of the, the minor stuff that doesn't get acknowledged in professional wrestling. The behind-the-scenes stuff. And... He is such a big proponent of social media as far as using it to promote social media, using it to, you know, not only push, you know, maybe the promotion you're working with, but push the product, push yourself. It was really, you know, and he was totally honest. And that's what I liked about it is Bryce is going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So I will say this to everyone. If Bryce Remsburg, if, if you have an opportunity around your town and Bryce Remsburg is doing a seminar, go to it. It is worth every dollar. Worth every dollar. I mean, I had an absolute blast. It was great to be there. And I learned a lot about the, I guess, the other aspects of professional wrestling that we don't really think about that much. So, if you see a Bryce Remsburg seminar, and if it's, you know, not physical, go to it. Worth every dollar. Every dollar. Although I do have to mention uh, one story, and then we're going to get into our Clash of the Champions review. Because uh, myself and uh, a couple of my friends, Brian and Ed, we went we went to the show. It was a free show. So as we're leaving the venue, we we see a lot of smoke in the like in the building. So now my first thought was not you know like it's a fire. It's probably like okay, there's probably some party going on. Fro, I kid you not. There must have been over a hundred people in this entranceway. No music. 
and yet they're dancing with these headphones on. And there's a DJ playing music, but you can't hear the music. Wow. Oh my god, it was hilarious. I think this is a new fad right now. It's called Disclo. So okay. basically what it is, is you have a you have a set of headphones. You put the headphones on, and the music is playing in the headphones, and you just dance. The music is not blasting in the whole building. It's only where you can hear it. Oh my god, it was hilarious. Hmm. That's what the future is going to be, my friend. I'm going to go to a club in about three, five years. No music is playing, blasting in the building, but yet people are dancing with headphones looking like a bunch of ridiculous fools. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah! <laughs> yep, that's how it's going to be. <laughs> well, I wish I had that kind of reaction for a Clash of Champions. Because oh. this was a mixed bag. It was very mixed bag. And I have to say that I was very happy that I went to bed when I went to bed. Because <laughs> oh, Jesus oh, we're going gonna, we're gonna to mention that in a little bit. <laughs> I am extremely happy that I went to bed when I went to bed. Yeah, I, because I, I've, I've seen the rest of this pay-per-view. And it, it was pretty okay until I went to bed. Right. Then it took a shit on nights, like and yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. We'll 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 tell you guys when this happened. But yeah. So, um, for those of you who are new for the first time, welcome, welcome aboard. We're going to talk about each match. We're going to give our rating, and then we're also going to tell you the rating that Dave Meltzer gave this. You know, gave the match. And also CBS and ESPN, because apparently they are wrestling experts. Of course course they are. are. You know. I mean. mean. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, let's start with the kickoff, because we had two kickoff matches. Very rare to have two kickoff matches um, on a a pay-per-view Unless it's like a WrestleMania or a SummerSlam. But this is Clash of Champions. Mm -hmm. So our first was a three-way match for the Cruiserweight title. Drew Gulak defending against Lince Dorado and Humberto Herrillo. Um, you know, I thought this was an alright match. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, I thought it was good. Um, I want to see more of Carrillo. Oh, definitely. Lince is good. Drew is good. I want to see more of Carrillo in this, or or at least see more of him in action. Mm -hmm. Um, the ending of the match is Carrillo has the pin. He's going to win the title, but Drew comes in, throws him out, and Drew pins Lince to retain the cruiserweight title. Mm -hmm. I thought this was a fun little match. You know, not nothing too big, too grand, but it was worth you know worth the watch. I gave this a C. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's, a it's a C. C. It's an okay match. It's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I I thought I the winner was pretty uh, clear, clear from, from the beginning, beginning and it and showed some, some, some new talent. So it was very smart of them to. Yeah. Have this on the free show. show. I will not will say not that about the other match, match, but right. it was very yeah, smart to have to have this match on the free yes. show. Meltzer gave this match three and a half stars. That's a that's a respectable rating. I think that's a good yeah. rating. Yeah. CBS Sports gave it a C plus, and ESPN did not give it a rating because for those of you who don't know, ESPN does not rate kickoff matches. Or do they? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Because we now go to our other pre-show match. Now this is another. I'm I'm confused about the booking. That that's one of the things about this pay-per-view that that irritated me. I'm not gonna say bug me. It irritated me. 
is the way this pay-per-view was booked. Because your other pre-show match, AJ Styles defending the United States title against Cedric Alexander. Why is this a pre-show match? Yeah. Yeah. I really don't really understand, understand why. why. I mean, I enjoyed the heck out of this match. This was one of my favorite matches of the entire night. Yep. yep. I, don't I don't understand, understand why, why, this why this is here. here. Which match... Or actually, I'll tell you what. When, I, when we go through the matches... Mm. Mm. If I say a certain match, I want you to tell me that's the match you would have switched the U.S. title match with. Sure, sure. Because I, I sort of want to be, I think I know where you're going to go, or I think I know which one you pick. <laughs> but it's I just want to be. It's, it's pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cedric starts off like a house of fire, almost wins the title right away. Uh, they go to the outside, and then it becomes AJ Styles, pretty much for the most part dominating, but it was still a good match to watch. Mm hmm. I gave it a B. This is, is a B this plus, a B plus for me. For me? Mm, okay. Meltzer gave this match two stars. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to guess maybe because of the time. They didn't really get a lot of time on this one. No, no but, but I, I, think I, I think when you, when you have, have a very, very like fast like match like this, like this and it's, and on, it's the on the pre-show, the pre-show. I, mean, I mean, it's, it's perfectly, perfectly C+. Plus. C plus. Mm-hmm. Um, CBS gave this a B, and ESPN rated this three and a quarter out of five. Mm. Mm. So for the most part, we're we're all, with the exception of Meltzer, we're all in agreement that that match was a good match. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. But was it the best match of the night? You'll have to no, wait and no. see. <laughs> well, there you go. Thanks a lot, bro. <laughs> okay, so now to the official pay per view. We begin with the Raw Tag Team title match, Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins against Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. I, I find it, I find what I find I most, most funny, funny about this about is, is uh, when, uh, when we're on the call, yes. so, hey, hey, is, is, is the, is the, <laughs> is the, is the universal, universal title first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Steve, we, we had, um, we had a bunch of people on. Steve, who is in our Facebook group, he was like, what? They're doing a universal title match first? What the hell is this? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's the tag title match. <laughs> <laughs> but I could, but you know what? In all seriousness, mm-hmm. I could understand the confusion. Oh, well, definitely. definitely could. This is a good tag team match. It um, is, it is. Braun and Seth, for the few weeks they were together as a tag team, we're a good tag team. Ziggler and Rude are starting to become a good tag team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just managed to gel everything together in this match. Uh, a lot of heel work, which looked really good in the ring. Um, and then the finish, you know, no cheating in the end. Rude beats Seth. He pins mm-hmm. him in the ring, wins the tag team titles. It's just done really, really well. So Ziggler and Rude win the tag team titles. I gave it a B minus. I gave it a B minus as well. Meltzer gave this two and a quarter stars. Mm-hmm. CBS Sports gave it a B minus. ESPN gave it a three out of five. Okay. Okay. Our next match is the SmackDown women's title match, Bailey against Charlotte Flair. Now, being that it is in Charlotte Flair's hometown, for the most part, it's, you know, Charlotte has to lose because they don't normally let uh, the hometown wrestler win. What surprised me was how quick this match went. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Um, there's really nothing much to say except the ending where I think it was like the bottom turnbuckle pad got taken off. 
Charlotte five, went five. face first into it. Bailey rolled her up, and Bailey retained the title. Mm. Mm. And I'm looking at Meltzer's time, and I think this is the shortest match of the entire pay per view because he has it at 344. That's yeah, very it's very disappointing. That's, 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 that's very disappointing. Very disappointing. Yeah. 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 I'm, 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 I'm very like, very like why, why, why did why this get as little time as it did? That's yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. I gave this a C plus. Uh, I uh, gave it the C minus. All right, Melter gave this one and a quarter stars. CBS Sports gave it a B minus. ESPN gave it one and a half out of five. Mm-hmm. So our next match is the SmackDown tag team title match. Big E and Xavier Woods against the Revival. The story to this match is this. The Revival go after the injured leg of Xavier Woods. And this is done very, very well. Because they attack Woods at the very beginning of the match. And he's out for a bit. He's out of the match for a bit. Mm -hmm. So basically, Big E has to go two on one. So then, when Xavier finally gets up, Big E makes the tag and Xavier does the work. But the Revival go after the injured leg of Xavier Woods. So they hit the move, they they hit the shatter machine, and it's like, okay, well, they're going to win the titles. Mm -hmm. Instead, they do a reverse figure four on Xavier Woods. Biggie's been knocked out at this point, and Xavier Woods taps out, and we have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. I really like the way this was done. This was a very well-constructed match told from the point of, hey, the Revival know what to do to win the titles. There's an injured man. They basically put their whole game plan around going after the injured man, and it worked really well, I thought. I gave this a B-. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, I gave uh, this I gave a B, this actually. B actually. Okay. I, 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 I thought this, I thought this almost, almost was too much of the night. Uh, yeah. No, I was going to say, I thought both men's tag title matches were good. I oh, yeah. really oh, did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's hope for this tag team division, both sides. Meltzer gave this two and three quarter stars. CBS Sports gave this a C plus. ESPN gave it a three and a half out of five. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, now before we go to our next match, there's a backstage segment. Charlie Caruso, who looked fan freaking tastic. Oh my god, I mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. she interviews Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross because they have a woman's tag team title defense against Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. During the segment, the microphone, the -the over-the-head microphone, falls over on top of Alexa. And it's R-Truth holding the mic and Carmella. So Alexa does the only possible thing you could really do, which is yell into the microphone, R-Truth is backstage. So, which actually is... It's done well. I like that mm-hmm. part. So at least we're getting the 24-7 title brought into the mix. Sadly, that is the only good thing to come out of this next match, which happens to be the women's tag team title match. Yeah, this yeah, is this the worst is the match, worst of, the match of the night. Ooh, it's second worst for me. Uh-huh. I, I got a worse one later. Uh, I really really hate this. So, during the match, R-Truth enters the ring, Mm -hmm. being chased by a bunch of other people. Alexa Bliss rolls up R-Truth, only to get a two count. 
our truth escapes that's really the highlight of the match if you want to call it a highlight bliss and cross retain the tag team titles i gave this a d plus yeah, yeah i gave I this, gave this a, d a d minus Meltzer gave this one and three quarter stars cbs sports gave it a c i don't know how that got a c ESPN gave it two and three quarters out of five. Mm. Wow. I Man, some of these people are being generous with that match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next match, Intercontinental title match. The Miz challenging Shinsuke Nakamura. Loved this match. Really, 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 really good. good. This, maybe, maybe. yeah, this, yeah. Mm, if it wasn't for the next match, this would have been my match of the night. Hold on, play. Hold on, play. Um, I think I, I think, think this, I is, think this actually is actually it's my, it's match, my of match of the night. night. I mean, it was good. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of good back and forth action. Sami Zayn's on the outside. He's the mouthpiece for Shinsuke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of near falls in this match. And it's almost a few times where it's like, oh, Miz is going to actually win the title. Because if he had won the title, it would have been the record-tying ninth reign for the Intercontinental title. Jericho has the record. But, you know, it's near falls. Shinsuke hits the Kinshasa to win the, or to retain the title. Really well done. Really, really well done match. I gave this a B. <laughs> it's a solid B. Uh, I think this uh, uh, actually was a B plus almost an A minus for me. Yeah. I really, really liked it. I hope it's something I will say again. Honestly, I hope they keep the title on Shinsuke for a long time because I think with his work ethic and giving him the right challengers, he can elevate that Intercontinental title. I really mm. do. Meltzer gave this two and a quarter stars. CBS Sports gave it a C plus. ESPN gave it three and a half out of five. Next match, and this is probably my match of the night. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title. Oh, this is just well done all around. You get good action. In the match, mm-hmm. 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 Uh, you get good heel tactics from Sasha, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then you get like the last seven minutes of this match, and it is done so well mm-hmm. because Sasha tries to bring in a chair. The referee won't let her use the chair. Sasha and Becky they fight over the chair. Becky eventually has the chair. Becky hits the referee on the arm, which apparently will knock you out. You know. So Becky hit the referee with the chair. Becky and Sasha then start to fight. And they go up into the they go they go up through the crowd. They go around the concession stand. Not as fun as that one at Extreme Rules, but it was still a fun fight. Then they go back down the stairs. They're doing, you know, disarmers. They're getting out of it. They're doing a lot of great stuff. Apparently, at one point, and I missed this entirely. I didn't read this until it was up on the news this week. A fan apparently groped Sasha Banks when she was going back over the barricade. Like, Mm. he like, he grabbed her ass. Okay. But okay. I missed that. Yeah, I didn't, and, see that. I didn't see that. And Sasha is now planning to sue the fan, which I think is a great move. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They continue the fight. They get back in the ring. Becky hits the crap out of Sasha many, many times with the steel chair, puts her in the disarmor. Bunch of referees come out. Becky Lynch is disqualified for hitting the referee with the chair. Sasha Banks wins, but Becky keeps the title. Really well done, and also another good thing. And I and I said it. I think after you had left, Fro, 
the way they set that up, that match, mm. it looked like they're going to head this one to Hell in a Cell, which they mm. are, because they're going to compete inside Hell in a Cell. This is, like I said, this was my match of the night. I gave this a very strong B, almost a B plus. I gave it, I gave it, the, gave B. it the B. All right. Melcher rated this three and three quarter stars. CBS Sports gave it a B plus. ESPN gave it four and a quarter out of five. Okay. Okay. So at this point, the the show's okay. You know, it's it's got it's got its good points. It's got its you know not so good point. It, it hasn't been terrible. So this is when Fro goes to bed. Yep. I'm very, she, very, she, very, she, very happy with that. Because Fro left on a good, he left on a high note. A and good here's, high note. Here's, the, here's the match here's the I match would, I would <laughs> definitely, definitely switch. switch. <laughs> with a <the> picture. Oh. <laughs> yep. 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 Because yep. the next match, oh my God, if you did that, Vince would have killed you on the spot that night. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Kofi Kingston versus Randy Orton for the WWE title. Yeah, I would switch I would this switch and have it on the pre-show. I'm not even joking. This match was bad. It's awful. It's awful. I mean, we were talking during the match about how bad this match was, and we mm. don't mm. normally do that ever watching a show. But, oh my god. it, it It's like... I, it's so hard to say. Because on the one hand, yeah, Randy Orton is pretty bland. He's a mm-hmm. bland oh. wrestler. But yet, Kofi Kingston, who we all love, he's deserved the title. He's gotten in a nice long reign. I don't know if it's we've gotten to the point where Kofi's title defenses aren't believable. Or if he just can't bring it in the big match situations. Because when he had that match with Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania, oh my god, that was that was a hell of a match. That that's a match of the year contender, mm-hmm. I would think. But since then, and I can't think I I just can't point this out, bro. I don't know if Kofi can't deliver more in these matches, or if it's the opponent. I just can't figure it out. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much all there is to say. Kofi gets the win with Trouble in Paradise to retain the WWE title. <sighs> I gave this a D. This was a straight up D. <clears throat> I give this enough. <clears throat> wow. Yep. yep. I give it enough. And, and you said the women's tag title match was the worst. No, match. this no, this was the this worst. Was worst. Yeah. Meltzer gave this three stars. Why? Why? I don't know. He must you you go ask him. Freaking blind. CBS Sports gave it a C minus. ESPN. Oh my god. ESPN gave us three and a quarter out of five. <laughs> what are they watching? Oh, no, what no. the hell were they watching? Because it obviously wasn't the same match that I saw, that Luke saw, that Steve saw, and you saw. And I'm sure Grass Dragon. Because I, I don't know if Grass Dragon watched the rest of this show or not. I'm going to I'm guess you did. Yeah. Wow. I we must have all missed something with that match. We really must have. So our next match is the only match that is not a championship match. Eric Rowan versus Roman Reigns in a no disqualification match. Uh it was a little bit better than the previous match, but it really <laughs> wasn't much of a match until the no, end. No, no, no. Because they start the match outside of the ring, they go through the crowd briefly, come back around, and they're just fighting. There's really nothing to it. 
And then, like I said, it really does, nothing really happens until the end of the match because Rowan is going back to the ring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reigns is following him. Then all of a sudden, Reigns gets knocked down and it's Luke Harper. What a great surprise this was. I did not expect this. Because I thought, you know, they were going to just have Luke sit out the rest of the contract, you know, until it was over. But mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. they brought him back. He helps Rowan. And Eric Rowan beats Roman Reigns on pay-per-view. It's pretty amazing, it's pretty yeah. Amazing, yeah. Um, I'm going to say this. I think the second half of this match is better than the first half. That first half made oh, no sense oh. whatsoever. Definitely. Um, second half was good. Especially the twist ending. I gave this a C. Uh, I gave it a C, uh, and it a C minus. minus. Okay. Meltzer gave this two and three quarter stars. CBS Sports gave it a C plus. ESPN gave it two and a quarter out of five. And now we go to the main event, the final match, which some people thought would have been the opening match, but we had to remind them it was a tag title match. Mm -hmm. Seth Rollins versus Braun Strowman for the Universal title. This is a good match. It's, it's just a shame that it got put into a position where you had a really good women's title match and then followed by a shitty WWE title match mm -hmm. and an okay street fight to, to go after. Yeah, and it's yeah, also, it's a, little also a little shameful that we knew the result before, before the match started. started. For the most part. Yeah. But it was yeah. good for the, you know, it was good for what it was. I mean, I, mean, I, didn't, I, I didn't, didn't I enjoy this enjoy match. This I'm going to be in tightly truthful. I did not enjoy, did not this, enjoy match, this match, but that's mostly that's because, because I knew I knew, I knew a dandy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Well, why don't we go to the end of the match? Because Seth Rollins hits a curb stomp on the Braun. Mm -hmm. Braun mm -hmm. kicks out. Seth hits a second curb stomp, goes for a pin. Braun kicks out. Seth goes for a third curb stomp. Braun kicks out. Seth then hits the pedigree on Braun, then hits the fourth curb stomp of the match, and that's what gets the victory for Seth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then after the match, as Seth is leaving, they put the pay-per-view credits up, you think the pay-per-view's over, then all of a sudden the lights go out in the building, and here's the fiend Bray Wyatt beats up Seth Rollins, puts the mandible claw on him and Sister Abigail, and that's how the pay-per-view ends. I gave the match a C plus. Mm. Mm. I give it a C minus. minus. Alright. Meltzer rated this three and a half stars. CBS Sports gave it a B. And for some reason, ESPN did not give a rating to this match. Why? Why? I don't know. That's switch. That's switch. But I will say I enjoyed the ending of the pay-per-view. And now we're going to get Seth and Bray inside Hell in a Cell for the Universal title. Yeah. yeah. That will be that will very be good. Very good. Yeah. So, uh, we put up on the Facebook group, what would you grade this pay-per-view? Most people gave this show a C. Mm -hmm. Some people mm -hmm. gave it a B. Some gave it a D. One person gave it an F. Yeah, it's not yeah, a, it's, um, an F. It's not an F. I, no. I, I, I will I, give, I it, will a give it a C. Yeah, I'm going to give it a C as well because... But it's not but the it's strong, strong, strong C. C. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because no, there was no, some no. good stuff. It's a very, very C. There was some good oh, yeah. stuff oh, on yeah. this, but there weren't... But there were also some bad stuff on this. So mm -hmm. really, it, it wasn't... It's sort of like just in the middle. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst. 
And I think the one comment we got about this says it all perfectly, this pay-per-view. This is from Joe. He wrote, just, eh, not terrible, not great. That's yeah, perfect. Yeah. That's a perfect, def- perfect description right there. Perfect yep, description. Yep, yep. Yep. So, pretty much a in the middle kind of a pay per view. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. For a show that on paper looked fantastic. On paper, it looked very, very good. good. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. But I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Maybe the most disappointing show of the year. Uh, or, or is yeah, it close? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I yeah. Think so. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, normally a review would end this show, but not this week, ladies and gentlemen. No. Because we are going through part two of PWI's top 500 wrestlers. And Frodo does and know how to silence his cell phone. Yeah, you really do. How dare you? Not how dare you. Dare. <laughs> so, this is 250 to number one. The Like I told Fro the other day, the only thing I know is who is number one. That's the only thing I know. So, so uh, I uh, want you to, I guess, want you to guess, again, again, how many, how are, many are, am I going, going to guess? I'm going to guess. <sighs> I'm going to say 95. Uh, I, think uh, I think you're think pretty, you're close. pretty close. close. Um, I'm, going I'm going to go, to go and say and 110. Say 110. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because we were both close last week. Yes. On, yes. Your, on how many you knew. So I, I, I feel pretty good about this week. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, it, I would, think it, it, will, it will be, will be very, very much easier, much easier because, because we are on. We are on uh, uh, and I, 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 I think I, I, I think say 110, 110 because, because last time last we did this, we did it this, was like the last, last 100, 100 I knew, I knew almost, almost everybody. everybody. Mm-hmm. So, so I'd like, I'd like it, we, now yeah, that now it that gets it up in. Yeah. We will see. We will see. All right. So let's get started. We will start with number 250, Yamato. No. No. Okay. Jack Gallagher. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, of course, you guys can play along uh, with yes. us. Yes. 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 Uh, but I want you to stop uh, when we come to top 10, because I, I really want to guess the okay. last 10 after. Okay. 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 Uh, 248, that's where we're at now. Marco Estrada. Yes. Yes. All right. Kip Sabian. Yes. Yes. Isaiah Scott. No. No. Marcus Burke. No. No. Chase Owens. Yes. Yes. Ace Austin. Yes. Yes. Drago. Yes. Yes. Chuck Taylor. Yes. Yes. Sunil Singh. Uh, yeah. Uh, Is yeah. that Is one that of the Singh brothers? Singh brothers? Yes. Yes. Then yes. I don't know what it is. All right. Jack Evans. No. No. Rocky Romero. Yes. Yes. Fred Yehai. Yes. 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 Samir Singh. Yes. yes. <laughs> Isn't that Isn't one that of the Sing Brothers? Brother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see what I did there. Pull back. Pull back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who's next? Joseph Connors. No. No. Daisuke Harada. Harada? Isn't he in, he in New, Japan? New Japan? No. Okay, then I don't, then know. I don't know. No. Right. No. Sean Spears. Yes. Yes. Tyler Breeze. Yes. Yes. Trent Beretta. Yes. Yes. Timothy Thatcher. No. No. Pepper Parks. Yes. Yes. 
Diamante Azul. No. No. All right. TJP. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. RJ City. No. No. EC3. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Orange Cassidy. And the son of this kid. I, I, always I always want, want to make, make that joke when I hear that name. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. All right. Acom. Acom? Acom? Mm hmm. <laughs> it sounds it like sounds that singer. Like that do you remember Acom? 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 Yeah, A-com. I do. Yeah. I'm Mr. Lonely. Nobody loves me. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yes. Uh, but I never heard about this guy. No. Okay. KZ. Yes. Yes. Crimson. Yes, and yes. we are at twenty. Oh wow! Already, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is going a little, going a little too fast. Little too fast. fast. Yeah. And Helico. Yes. Yes. Yuji Nagata. Yes. Yes. Mark Andrews. No. No. Ethan Page. Yes. Yes. Silas Young. Yes. Yes. Alexander Wolf. No, 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 no. Right, Mike Bailey. Yes, yes. Eddie Dennis. No, no. Jax Dane. No, no. Razor. Yes, yes. Josh Alexander. No, no. Masato Yoshino. No, no. Cameron Grimes. No, good no, name. Good name. Zach Gibson. No, no. Naoya, Naoya Nomura. No, no. James Drake. No, no. Yo. Yo to you, Yo too. To you too. No, no. <laughs> Wolf, <laughs> Wolfgang. Yes, yes. Luke Harper. Yes, yes. Eric Young. Yes. Yes. Sin Cara. Yes. Yes. Laredo Kid. No. No. Noam Dar. Yes. Yes. Show. Yes. Yes. Killian Dane. No. No. Ah, Killian? Killian? Why does that, Why does sound, that sound so sound familiar? So familiar. Mm-hmm. Where does he wrestle at? Uh, NXT. Uh, no, no, I don't remember. I don't remember. Anyway, right. no, no. Joe Doring. No, no. Shelton Benjamin. Yes, yes. Danny Birch. No, no. Matt Seidel. Yes, yes. J.D. Drake. No, no. Mance Warner. No, no. Shane Thorne. No. No. Aerostar. Yes. Yes. Oni Lorkin. No. No. Angelo Dawkins. No. No. Tucker. No. No. Montez Ford. No. No. Heath Slater. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Caristico. No. No. Carl Anderson. Yes. Yes. Carl Anderson, Carl Anderson is he really, is really a wrestling, wrestling style? style? Yeah. Wow. Wow. I didn't know. I didn't know. L. A. Park. Yes. Yes. Otis. Yes. Yes. Mark Coffey. No. No. Luke Gallows. Yes. Yes. Bo Dallas. Yes. Yes. Ita. No. No. Lince Dorado. Yes. Yes. Madman Fulton. No. No. Curtis Axel. Yes. Yes. Joe Coffey. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Lars Sullivan. Yes. Yes. Bray Wyatt. <laughs> How funny would it be if I said no? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Grand Metalik. Yes. Yes. Ketsuhiko Nakajima. No. No. Damian Priest. No. No. Joey Ryan. 
Yes. Yes. T Hawk. No. No. Bully Ray. Yes. Yes. Dave Christ. No. No. Dalton Castle. Yes. And we are at 50. Are at 50. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Joey Janella. Yes. Yes. Bobby Guns. No. No. Jake Christ. No. No. Keith Lee. No. No. Go Shiozaki. No. No. Mark Haskins. No. No. Tracy Williams. Yes. Yes. Anthony Henry. No. No. Tom Lawler. Is that, uh, Is that uh, the son? The son? Mm -mm, no. Oh, okay. No. 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 Epico. Yes. Yes. Hideki Suzuki. No. No. Eli Drake. Yes. Yes. T.K. Orion. No. No. Primo. Yes. Yes. Barbaro Cavernero. No. No. Vinny Marcellia. No. No. Matt Hardy. Yes. Yes. Jinder Mahal. Yes. Yes. Sammy Callahan. Yes. Yes. I'm surprised he's this low. Yeah. Yeah. 142. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty that's low. Pretty low. Harashima. No. No. PJ Black. Yes. Yes. Bad Luck Fale. Yes. Yes. Travis Banks. No. No. Roosh. No. No. Willie Mack. Yes. Yes. MJF. No. No. Takashi Sugiyora. No. No. Ilja Dragunov. He sounds Russian. He sounds Russian. No. He no. is. He is Russian. No. Yuji Okabayashi. No. No. Austin Aries. Yes. Yes. Apollo Cruz. Yes. Yes. Daisuke Sakimoto. No. No. Kurt Hawkins. Yes. Yes. Eric. Eric! Eric! No. No. <laughs> Moose. Yes. Yes. Michael Elgin. Yes. Yes. Tetsuya Endo. No. No. Ivar. No. No. Rasuke Taguchi. No. No. Killer Cross. Yes. Yes. Colt Cabana. Yes. Yes. Santana. <laughs> yes. Yes. Volador Jr. No. No. Kenny King. Oh, yes. yes. Scorpio Sky. Yes. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Yes. Flip Gordon. Yes. Yes. Wow. wow. We're on the yes. We're on the yes. Three in here. Three in here. Mm. Frankie Kazarian. Yes. Yes. Mark Briscoe. Yes. Yes. Trent Seven. Yes, yes. Elias. Yes, yes. Kalisto. Yes, yes. Jay Briscoe. Yes, yes. Tyler Bate. Yes, yes. Wow. wow. We are at we 80. Are at 80. Shuji Ishikawa. Aww. Aww. Fucking Fuji Ishikawa. Had to come here and destroy the yes. No, we no. had the yes movement going. Uh, uh, no, I no, don't know. No. All right, Christopher Daniels. Yes, yes. Taiji Ishimori. No, no. Scott Dawson. Yes, yes. Akira Tozawa. Yes, yes. Kanosuke Takeshida. No, no. All right, now we're into the top one hundred. Zach Ryder. Yes. Yes. David Starr. No. No. Dash Wilder. Yes. Yes. Tonga Loa. No. No. Minoru Tanaka. No. No. Eddie Edwards. Yes. Yes. Tama Tonga. Yes. Yes. Bobby Fish. Yes. Yes. Rowan. Yes. Yes. Zeus. 
Yes. Yes. Suwama. No. No. Tai Chi. Sorry? Sorry? Tai Chi. Oh, Tai Chi, oh, yes. Tai Chi, yes. Rich Swan. Yes. Yes. Drew Gulak. Yes. Yes. Xavier Woods. Yes. Yes. Seamus. Seamus, blow up to 100. Kyle O'Reilly. Yes. Yes. Chad Gable. Yes. Yes. Roderick Strong. Yes. Yes. Bandito. Uh, uh no. No. All right. Austin Theory. Austin Theory? Theory. Theory. Oh, no. Oh, no. Brody King. No. No. Naomichi Marafuji. No. No. Kushida. Yes. Yes. Nick Jackson. No. No. Matt Jackson. No. No. <laughs> Cesaro. Yes. Yes. Tomohiro Ishii. Yes. Yes. Big E. Yes. Yes. PCO. PCO? PCO? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sami Zayn. Yes. Yes. Matt Riddle. Yes. And yes. we are 110. 110. Andrade. Yes. Yes. Shingo Takaji. No. No. Pac. No. no. Pa- 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost said Almost no, said on, no him. on him. Low key. Yes. Yes. Kaito Kiyomiya. No. No. Jimmy Uso. Yes. Yes. Jay Uso. Yes. Yes. Evil. Yes. Yes. Jeff Hardy. Yes. yes. Evil is one Evil of is my one favorite wrestlers, by the way. So I'm a little disappointed that this is slow, but, but I'm happy that this. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. 61, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still. Uh, I Love said it. Jeff Hardy, Love right? It. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good day. Good day. Cedric Alexander. Yes. Yes. Jordan Devlin. Yes. Uh, Jordan, Devlin? Jordan Devlin? No. Jordan no. Devlin. No. No. All right. Dragon Lee. Yes. 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 Our truth <laughs> Yes. What's up? What's up? Ali. Ali, 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 no. Pete Dunn. Yes. Yes. Ray Mysterio. Yes. Yes. Marty Skrull. Yes. Yes. Robert Rude. Yes. Yes. Hiroki Goto. Mm, Goto. Goto. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rusev. Yes. Yes. Brian Cage. Yes. Yes. Minoru Suzuki. No. No. Dolph Ziggler. Yes. Yes. Tony Nice. Yes. Yes. Adam Page. Yes. Yes. Zack Sabre Jr. Yes. Yes. Sonata. Yes. Yes. Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis, yes. Aldis, yes. Kevin Owens. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Baron Corbin. Aww. Yes. Yes. Randy Orton. Uh, can I please can say, I no say no when I win? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I want don't to want know, know who he is. Right, right. Uh, uh, Matt yeah. Taven. Yes. yes. Drew McIntyre. Yes. Yes. The Miz. Yes. Yes. Alistair Black. Yes. Yes. Buddy Murphy. Yes. Yes. Juice Robinson. Yes. Yes. Shinsuke Nakamura. Sorry? Sorry? Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura, yes. Shinsuke Nakamura, yes. Right. Bobby I Lashley. Think, I think maybe I know who Shinsuke, Shinsuke Nakamura, Nakamura is. is. Yes. Yes. Johnny Impact. Yes. Yes. Pentagon Jr. Yes. Yes. Braun Strowman. Yes. Yes. Oh, well, what is Braun? Bra? Number 27. Ooh. Ooh. He was number six last year. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Uh, Velveteen Dream. 
Oh, oh fuck. fuck! I fuck. was I sure was he sure was on the top ten. Nice. Really? Really? Mm-hmm. Number ah. twenty-six. Ah. Okay. Okay. Tetsuya Naito. Yes. Yes. Kento Miyahara. No. No. Jeff Cobb. Yes. Yes. Phoenix. Yes. Yes. Ricochet. Yes. 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 John Moxley. Yes. Yes. Finn Balor. Yes. Yes. Adam Cole. Yes. Yes. Kota Ibushi. Yes. Yes. Jay Lethal. Yes. Yes. Cody. Yeah. Oh, oh he was also was going to be uh, in my guess. Let me adopt that. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Tommaso Ciampa. Yes. Yes. Jay White. Yes. Yes. Samoa Joe. Yes. Yes. All right. We are now at the top ten. Okay. okay. I'm probably not probably going, not to, get going to get order. But the... I, I haven't, haven't heard, heard John Cena. John Cena. Okay. So I'm going to guess guess he's in in the top ten. Then I haven't heard AJ Styles. Styles. Uh, Uh, Then I haven't haven't heard heard, uh, the the only only Japanese Japanese wrestler wrestler I should know. know. Jericho's opponent. opponent. Jesus Christ, Jesus help, me. Christ help me. Oh, um, Okada? Okada. 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 Haven't I heard? Haven't Thank I heard. you. Thank you. So I'm going to so guess, going he's, to guess there. he's there. Uh, uh, how many is that? How many is that? I think you've gone to four. Hmm. Mm. I feel like I feel there's, like someone, there's like someone like very, very obvious, obvious. <laughs> really like really forgetting because, because you you said you Daniel, said Bryan, Daniel Bryan, Bryan, right? No, I have not said Daniel Bryan. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then Daniel Bryan Daniel is there. Okay, okay, good. Okay, I'm okay, going to keep, going those, to keep five. those five. Okay, that's fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right, so here's the top ten. Okay. Okay. Number ten. Will Ospreay. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Number nine, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shit that Japanese Japanese names, names, but I know. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Number eight, Kenny Omega. Here we go, yeah. Here we go, yeah. Number seven, Roman Reigns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I forget that Roman, Roman Reigns is popular. Reigns is popular. <laughs> Number six, Johnny Gargano. Oh, okay. Okay. Number five, Okada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number four, Kofi Kingston. Okay. Okay. Number three, AJ Styles. Wow. wow. So, so he's gone down, down to down places. To places. Uh, whoa, whoa, let me let me look where he was at last year. I think he was, well, number, he one, was number one, wasn't he? No, he was number two last year. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Omega was number one. Ah, last year. okay. And he okay. went to number eight. So, right. so we are guaranteed a new number one and number two. And number two. Well, very true. <laughs> number two, Daniel Bryan. Yeah, yeah. Very good very year for good him. Year for him. And the number <laughs> one wrestler on this I, year's I, I figured, I figured, I figured it, it, it out. Who is it? I think I, I, think I figured I it out. Say it. Say it. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. I'm a little I'm amazed a little that amazed I didn't that say it. it. <laughs> I figured it out <laughs> when, you, when when I was when like, I was oh, I haven't said Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. <laughs> You know, I, I, I got to say, I think they got the top ten right. Yeah, well, yeah, well definitely. I, I don't, the, the order, I don't really know, but they definitely got the top ten right. But what is but more what impressive is, more is, is that, that I, I, actually I actually got, got 70. 70. 
170. Wow. That's really out impressive. Of, out of 170 out of, out of 250. 250. Plus, plus. Wow. Proud of yourself wow. there. That's good. That's good. I'm, All yeah. right. yeah. I'm happy, well, with, I'm happy that. with that. Yep. As you should. Well, why don't we uh, start wrapping it up here and rock, rock, talk about rock. what we got coming up. Oh, actually, no. You know what? We're not going to wrap it up because I have an announcement to make. Mm. Mm. Um... Mark the date down, everyone. Saturday, October the 5th. That wrestling show will be at MCW's Tribute to the Legends convention. Woo! Woo! Taking place in Joppa, Maryland. Uh, the main attraction this year... is Bill! Bill. Uh, well, actually, it's going to be my dad. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, my dad and I are going to be there. But the main attraction this year is Kane. Ah, ah that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, also to appear, Devon Dudley, Tito Santana, Joey Ryan, and Miss Drake Maverick, Renee Michelle. Ah, I like ah, Renee I like Michelle. Renee Michelle. Uh, tickets are still available for the convention. Um, and all I'm I have sure. to I'm do, sure. yeah. well, that's yeah. a good thing. Good thing you asked because I'm going to tell you right now, the only way you can get in to the convention, this is very unique. This is very different this year. The only way you can get into the convention this year is you must have a ticket for the show that night. Oh, oh. Um, front row and second row ringside are sold out. Third row ringside is thirty bucks. Reserved seats are twenty five bucks. General admission is twenty. If you get a family four pack, that'll be four general admission tickets. It is sixty dollars. That's not now, at all. Now, if you are interested in Kane. If you, if you want to have the experience to meet him. If you want to do only the autograph or VIP, it is $50. I would pay, I would a, pay $50 a $50 to do that, to do that extra. extra. For either the autograph or the photo. Yeah, yeah. I, would. If, I would. If you do the combo, which is the autograph and the photo, mm -hmm. it is... Mm -hmm. Eighty dollars. I would do that would as do well. That as well. And if you did the VIP combo, which is a VIP line access, photo op with two people by professional photographer and an autograph for each person's hundred twenty five dollars. That is that not is a bad, bad price. price. No, not at all. Who's the second, Who's the one, second you one you would pick, pick though? The first one is Kane, of, of course. Of course. You know, I think I'd actually go with Renee Michelle. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have my picture with her. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> I really like I really her. Like and that. then Joey Ryan would be my third. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, uh, I, I know where I, know I would where ask I would Joey, ask Ryan, Joey to Ryan to autograph me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd imagine. So, yeah, that is... Saturday, October the 5th, the convention starts at noon. So it'll be from noon to 5, and then the show that night is from starts at 7, 7.30. So Are you going to the show? show? Yeah, we're going to stay for the... We're going to stay around that night. Um, nice. nice. Should be pretty fun. I, I told my dad it's going to be an easy day. We're starting... You know, it starts later this year, because... Other years it's been earlier, but this year it's going to be late with a twelve o'clock start. So yeah, that's, he won't yeah, be. Right. He, yeah, he won't be too exhausted. Uh, can I ask uh, you how ask much it costs for a table? For a table. Well, um, they are still offering tables, as a matter of fact. So if you'd like to be there, maybe get to see me. A hundred dollars for two tables. Oh, that's not oh, bad. And all you have to do to reserve the table is email mcw wrestling and i'll give you guys the email address right now it is mcw wrestling at gmail.com once again 
mcwwrestling at gmail.com. And what will you sell? sell? Oh, got magazines, DVDs, uh, other unusual items, you know, that we'll have there. And for the first time ever, we will be accepting credit cards this year. Nice. Nice. So... And how much? Yeah, how much, how much for a for an autograph and a picture? Of me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do it for free. To be honest. Aww. I would, Aww. That's I would do it for free. I I would not rip the people off. Aww. Aww. I would pay I would pay, pay yeah, twenty dollars for that. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But I wanted to kiss, <laughs> kiss as well. So. As well. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay, that that yeah. would have to be done without a picture taken. <laughs> I, I'd have to do it on the, I, I'd have to do it on the cheek though. Oh yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we can get into the plugs. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, send an email wrestlingman at that wrestling show dot com. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Twitter at wrestling show eleven. Visit the web or visit the uh, Facebook group. It is That Wrestling Show Fan Group. You type that in the search bar on Facebook. You're right there. And if you can't find it, it's okay. I always put the link in the description box for each episode so you guys can join. Uh, Visit ThatWrestlingShow.com and visit the Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Bill's World of Podcasts. Although I should mention that... Over the next several weeks, there's probably going to be some changes to the Patreon page, so be prepared. Fro, what do you have this week on another Digital Citizen? We went we through, went through 30, 30 new, new fall TV, fall premieres, TV premieres and gave you gave the premise the for it for and it also and picked also out picked our, our uh, most uh, anticipated of those and the and worst the ones. Worst ones. Oh. And, uh, and uh, next week, next we, will week we will do top 10, top 10 albums, albums that, has that has meant, meant the, most the most for us, for us during our, our, lifetime. our lifetime. Yeah. Wow. That's hard. hard. Oh, my God. It was so was hard so to hard write, to that, write list. that list. I can tell I, you. Can yeah. Tell I think I'd have to have at least 30 albums to start with and then to eliminate the 10. Oh, my I, God. I, I, had, I, I, had 15, I had 15 um, um, to begin with, to begin with and, and go down, go from, down number, from, from 15 to 10. That was, was awful. awful. Uh, I, 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 will, I will give I'll the give listeners, listeners to the show, show a little, a like, little sneak like preview. preview. Uh, uh, my, number uh, my number 10 is... Uh, 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 Swedish, Swedish group, group, but it's not it's ABBA. Not ABBA. And it's not Ace of Base? It is Ace of Base. Ace of Base. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, Happy Nation. Happy Nation. Okay. And, uh, and uh, why uh, that is, why my, is number my number 10? Well, you yeah. we have to figure have out, to figure next, out week. next week. Yep. All right, let's plug uh, friends. Of I'm, amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you guessed you guess of Base. That's the Finch. only <laughs> other Swedish group I know of: Abba and Ace of Base. Wow! Wow! Mm-hmm. Uh, but all right, check out our Vantage Point, the Retro Wrestling Podcast with Joe Morata and Michael Quinn. They dive into the retro world of professional wrestling as only they can. This week, they discuss. The demise of tag team wrestling in the WWF. Week three of the royal flush of the worst finishing moves. And a review of, yes, the World Bodybuilding Federation. Oh my god. actually reviewed that. Um, They actually, if you join their Facebook group, which I do recommend, they are taking nominations right now for the top ten... Best and worst wrestling theme songs. I'm going to put my two cents in because I went over a year discussing wrestling theme songs. So I'm going to put my two cents in on that one. Mm -hmm. Also, also because they are my friends and I love them to death. Sign up for their Patreon page. Because if you sign up for the $5 tier this week, they came out with part one of their review 
of WrestleMania 4. It is that long of a review that they have to break it into two parts. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Check, check it out. Uh, also check out the wrestling podcast about nothing with former referee Mike Crockett and someday the brawler Brian Malonis will come back. But for the time being, it is with Brian Fury. This week, they do an interview with indie wrestler Christian Casanova. That is the wrestling podcast about nothing. And if you like your podcasts done with one individual, check out Greetings from Allentown with Petey Winson. He watches one episode of wrestling each week and discusses it in his own perspective. This week, he discusses an episode of WWF Superstars from November 1988. And if you're looking for non-wrestling related podcasts, check out Unspooled with Paul and Amy, where they watch each movie of the AFI's Top 100 Movies, the 2007 list. This week, they discuss the Alfred Hitchcock classic, North by Northwest. Uh, Do you think that's that's Hitchcock's best? best? I actually think so. so. It's very near the top. I, I have it at number two. Okay. okay. What's your number What's one? Your number one. Vertigo. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, I have I Vertigo I have as Vertigo my number two, actually. actually. And Dial and M, M, for for M for murder as my number, as three. As my number three. I the North by Northwest is is near the top of the list for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going, I'm, to, say going to say something very controversial. controversial. I think, okay. I think birds, birds is overrated. Is overrated. <laughs> I've, I have not seen birds yet. Oh, oh, Psycho, so I've seen, and I think Psycho is a little bit overrated. Uh, uh, Psycho is Psycho a little is overrated, overrated, but that, um, the, thing um, is, the thing is, I mean, that I mean, finger at the end. At the end. Uh, oh, yeah, spoiler right, alert for a 70 year old movie. Right, if you movie. haven't seen Psycho, uh, let's go to the end of the show. We'll talk to you, I'll talk to you next week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, when, when when it when shows it that shows the skeleton of his mom, mom is sitting in the chair. That is a good part. I love I that love ending. That I that just love that part. ending, that, that he has that played he has his mom all the time. Mm-hmm. And I actually, I uh, if, if if you at all like that uh, premise, I actually recommend Bates Motel, uh, the TV show. Yeah, that was a successful show. I, I it was really, it. really good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So anyway, next anyway. next week, because we're going to be really close to the beginning of the Wednesday Night War. It, it's unofficially called the Wednesday Night War. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Next week, I'm going to get you guys prepared for the Wednesday Night War by talking about what you're going to expect on both NXT and AEW, the talent that they have, the the networks are going to be on, basically sort of a how-to-be-prepared for... October the 2nd, because that's the big day, folks. I mean, we've talked about all year, you know, WrestleMania weekend, we've had double or nothing, but October the 2nd is going to be remembered as the biggest wrestling day of the entire year. And we're all going to be a part of it. I'm going to be a part of history. I'm going to be at the, at the AEW show that night. So that's going to be a blast. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. be prepared. And actually, no, actually, you know what? We're going to talk about that whole week because you're going to have Raw Monday, then the big Wednesday night, and then Friday with SmackDown mm-hmm. because uh, Brock Lesnar's challenging Kofi Kingston for the WWE title. Yep. We knew it had to end. <sighs> it's going to end a terrible, painful death. Mm-hmm. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Oh, and don't forget to listen to the Disney Plus discussion I have with Jim. Uh, not only here on the That Wrestling Show feed, but also on the Nostalgia Crew feed. So check mm-hmm. that out as well this weekend. Everybody have a good, safe weekend. 
Uh, Fro, thank you again for coming Check on. Check out uh, Sharks, Tom. We are going to have a special yes. episode. So, yes, yes, we are. Yes. Um, and we'll talk. We'll have you back on for the PWI 100. Yes. So everybody have a good, safe weekend. And thank you for listening to That Wrestling Show, the only podcast where all pro wrestling matters. And as always... Uh, I think my uh, Jiggy is going to win going the Masked mask Singer. Spoiler, spoiler alert. alert. Oh. Mm-hmm. Wrestle on.